all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question this morning as you turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 11 and we're going to be looking at verse uh, 25 and 26. How many of you know, have knowledge of, where the name and why the name Christian came to be? Tucked away in this 11th chapter of the book of Acts is the answer to that question. And so let's look in verse 25 and 26. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, who had just been converted on the Damascus road, had been welcomed by the disciples of Jesus, the followers, the believers in Christ, and uh, now God is using this man. And so Barnabas departs to Tarsus and He's looking for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So is that there for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great number of people. The disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. I want to share with you how to become a Christian and how to be a Christian. You say, well, Pastor, I'm already a Christian. Uh, uh, that's an elementary thing, and uh, I've already received that. I, I, I'm a follower of Jesus. But you need to come to appreciate that more in your life than you ever have before. For our days are numbered here upon this earth, and what we do for Christ, we must do it quickly. Your life and my life is numbered according to the book of God. Our days are limited and so we have a limited amount of time to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So how does one become a Christian? 
Well, every Christian who is a Christian needs to be refreshed in how she or he became a child of God. Then we need to understand more definitely and more fully how to be a Christian. It's one thing to become a Christian. It's another thing fleshing out that Christian faith and Christian life and walk in Jesus Christ. What are the, some of the things that should mark you, that is, identify you as a Christian? Our text this morning says, and they were first called Christians in Antioch. How did that name come about? It came about through religious people that were not believers, and it became a term of derision for them, a term of rebuke. It was not a popular name. You need to understand that. Jesus was not popular, so you and I should not think that we're going to be popular by carrying the name Christian. That's an awesome, awesome revelation. I want you to let that sink in for just a moment. And I want to impress upon you very emphatically that it is becoming in America less popular to be a Christian. I saw on TV this week that we are now compared with the radical terrorist Muslims. So don't let that upset you, but let that concern you to the extent that you realize who you are and what you are and what you have in Jesus Christ. They were first called Christians in Antioch. Not a very popular name. They were rebuking them. Uh, if you'll look in the earlier chapters of Acts, you will find the religious people saying, you have filled Jerusalem with this doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine of Christianity. The doctrine of Jesus. And so, uh, as we look back upon that, we know it's the doctrine of Christianity and the doctrine of Jesus. And, and so they said, you've just filled this place with all of this doctrine. All of this teaching. And so they were making fun of them. The media in America makes fun of Christians. If you don't believe it, watch very closely. And you will find that they will give everybody a podium on which to speak except Christian people. And so it's not a popular thing being a Christian. But it is a wonderful thing to be a Christian. Can you say Amen. amen. I'd rather be a Christian than anything I know today. I'd rather be a Christian. Being a Christian is important. To be called a Christian, you must first have faith in Christ and you must turn to Christ. Look at verse 21 uh, in Acts chapter 11. It says, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great multitude believed, that is, had faith, and turned to the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it, without faith, it is impossible to please him, speaking of God. For he that believes that God is must come, come to him, uh, and he must believe that God is. It is impossible without faith to please God. So we must have faith. There is no way to become a Christian without having faith in Jesus, God's only begotten Son. In Romans, turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 8 and 9. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 and 9. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Look at verses 11 and 12. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same.